I got into producing when I was around 12. I think 15 was when I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a producer. But I got into it when I was 12. And this is showing my age, but I don't care. But um, <laughs> back in the day, like, we used to have these old computers. This was before PCs, before, like, you know, Max. We had friggin' uh, Atari and Commodore computers. That's how long I was producing. And um, basically... That was the first computer I started making beats on. I remember being in school and and in and my music teacher was telling me about a computer and she said, "I was like, what does it do?" She was like, "I don't know what this does." She kind of plays the piano, record presses record and plays the piano, and I'm like, and plays it back, and I'm like, wow. And then she plays like another sound, and I'm like, raw. So you can make a whole like you can be your own band. She was like, yeah. And I was hooked. Like, I would leave class and go straight there and just play, like, songs like, like Mariah Carey or other songs and just try and copy it, innit? And I then um, I became very addicted to it. Because I was a musician before, you know what I mean? Growing up in church and uh, and playing. So I was always a musician from, like, four years old, playing the drums, playing the piano by 11, you know what I'm saying? Like, guitar and bass. So I was always a musician. But the production side was when I was, like, 12. And I was like, wow, this is fun. And then when I was 15, like, I started reading up on producers like Quincy Jones. And I'd always look at the back of CDs to see who produced what record. And uh, Quincy Jones was, like, the first person I fell in love with. Because, obviously, Thriller and Off the Wall. And then you start digging in, and you're like, wow, he made this, 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 and this. And then that was kind of where I, put, I knew what a producer was. It was really early in my, in my, in my, in my years. Um, and um, I didn't want to be the forefront singer dude that was on stage running up and down. I wanted to kind of be behind the scenes, but yeah, so that's that's where I started. I like to see stuff being built. I guess that's because of production, so I like to watch buildings being built. Like, I will drive past a building like 50 times during the course of a year just to see the final <laughs> structure of it. So, um, I think that the, they those two relate because in production you have to start from nothing and end with something. Do you know what I mean? And the same thing with, with architecture. You start with nothing. And you kind of pay attention to the dynamics of what they put in to make that particular room or that particular space. So yeah, that that's an inspiring thing. Chipmunk's album was one of my best projects I've ever done. Not because of it doing well, just because everything, everything was against it. And it made a statement, do you know what I mean? Everybody, radio said they weren't going to play champion. They weren't good. Their radio was like, we're not playing champion, we don't want Chris on the radio. They played champion, you know what I mean? We got a number two with it. So that whole album and that whole process was was a was a, was a, was a great experience. Plus, you know, I did ninety percent of the album. Um, this new project I just finished doing is probably my favorite favorite, which is uh, Fantasia's new album. Uh, Fantasia Barino was one of the winners of American Idol, one of the first winners of American Idol, and you know she's been through ups and downs, ups and downs. You know, her and Jennifer was on the same show. It was a deep show, and you know. She's been scrutinized and been um, called a lot of different things in the, in the industry. So when they brought her to me, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I want to do this one tune. It was only meant to be one song, you know what I mean? Um, but she came to studio, we spoke, realized that, you know what I mean, She it's not all that bad, you know what I mean? She's not as bad as the media put out there. It's, she's not as bad as the blogs put out there. And she just gets caught up. She's human, you know what I mean? She gets caught up in the bull crap. And then her her story unfortunately gets exposed, <laughs> and other people don't. So it was sad, but we so we, you know I, I was determined. I'm like I'm kind of like the man that likes to help the underdog. You know what I mean? So I, we spoke, and she was honest, and you know what I mean. She cried, and she she you know what I mean. Told me that she really needs to fight and come back, and I wanted to be the man to help her. So we started off with one song, turned to four songs, turned to five songs. Then we had 10 songs and the label was like, yo, you might as well executive produce this album. I was like, hell yeah, give me the album. So I, I ended up doing the album. And to keep it all the way real, they were sending me records from other producers. And I went feeling the songs. And then they sent me a record and I was like, yo, who's that? And it was like, yo, it's um, Emily Sandy. She wrote it. I was like, yes. And it's called Side Effects of You, which is actually what the album's called, Side Effects of You. And um, I picked it and I was like, who produced it? And, uh, and it hadn't been produced, but there was piano and strings. I was like, yo, who did that? I was like, Naughty Boy. I was like, yes, get him on it. 
Do you know what I mean? And you know, he finished the the, the song and sent it over, which sounds incredible. One of the biggest songs we did on the album.